about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he sets my feet on solid When I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He saved me up and turned me around, how He set my feet on solid. Makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah Heaven is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Sing a little loud. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to see all of you here on this uh, Sunday before Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Amen. I want to remind you today we do have a big Thanksgiving meal prepared for you, okay? We want everybody to stay and eat with us. That'll be in the fellowship hall this way, so you be sure and do that. And I can guarantee you it's going to be a good meal. I promise you that. They're getting it ready now. I want to let you know that cantata practice will be today uh, again, so please stay after lunch if you're a part of the cantata and, and be a part of that practice. Uh, Brian wanted me to announce that on December 15th, he'll be showing the movie Do You Believe here at the church at 7 o'clock on December 15th, so please keep that in mind. This Wednesday night, we're going to be having a Bible study right here in the sanctuary, okay? There will be no awanas. That means there'll be no meal, so you're just going to come for the word, right? Amen. All right, we'll be right in here at 7 o'clock with a, a Bible study, uh, so please uh, keep that in mind. Uh, got a note here that I, I need to read this morning. It's a thank you note. And it says, thanks to everyone who prayed, called, and asked about me. Thank you for all the food that was brought to us. It feels very special to be a part of a church such as Voice of Truth. And love you all. May God bless Bone and Lisa. Thank you for that, Bone and Lisa. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. All right, we're going to ask you to stand at this time if you would. This will be a time of giving our tithes and offerings to the Lord. The blessing bowl is in the middle aisle right up front here. So you come and give now as Elaine plays, okay? Oh, by the way, you can fellowship for a few minutes if you'd like.
All right, if you would, I'm going to ask you to go back to your seats for a moment. We've got something to do before we sing again. Uh, it's a happy crowd this morning and loud. Amen. Check. Check. We're going to ask you, if you would, to please go back to your seats for just a moment. All right, if I could have your attention real quickly, please. What's that? Did it come out? <laughs> should, should I say sometime this morning? <laughs> hey, give me a little more gain on the guitar, please. All righty. If I could have your attention, we're going to pray. Uh -huh. Gary Bates is here with us this morning. He went back to Savannah Friday. And they put in a stent and a port for uh, receiving the chemo, and he's going to be starting that soon. And, Gary, I'm going to ask you if you would to come down. Let's have a prayer with Gary. And if you want to come, Sandra, also, and be with him, that'd be fine. Uh, all of you who would that want to come and pray with us this morning, uh, you can pray at your seat so you can come and gather around with us. That'll be fine. Do we need to pray for Phil, too, to be able to walk this morning? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Um, Father God, as we come to you this morning, Lord, we uh, thank you for Gary and Sandra, Lord, and what they mean to us here at the church. And I, I just pray for Gary now, Lord. Uh, he's going through a tough time, uh, but, God, you're in control. God, we know you love them, and, and God, I just pray that you would take care of him through this, whatever he has to go through, whatever treatments, God, that you would just strengthen him, and God, you can remove this cancer, and we're praying for healing, Lord. We're praying that you would just remove it, God, and heal him uh, so that he can be about your business, and uh, we're just trusting you for what you're going to do now. We just praise you and love you, and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, I'm going to ask John to come sit in. He's got surgery coming up. Is it? Tomorrow, John, or tomorrow morning? Okay. Okay. Jeff, you want to pray? Lord, again, we just bow down before you and just praise your holy name, knowing that you're the creator of all things and that you can take care of anything that we have in our lives. You can just guide us in the right direction. And we, Lord, we just... Lift John up to you right now. He's going to have back surgery tomorrow. In two places in his back. And I just pray, Lord, that you would guide those doctors and that they might have the steady hand and the right attitude and the right mindset to do what it is that you would have them do. And, Lord, we just ask you to bring them him through this. And Lord, we just ask you to, to use him mightily on the other side as he comes through it and he comes out. I... Pray for Barbara, too, as she's uh, going to be a caregiver and help her, Lord, to have patience and strength. And we just lift you up, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. <laughs> we, we, we pray for her. Okay. Phil, you might want to stay here with me just a minute if you can. If you can't, go sit down and we'll just, okay. Okay. Um, we, yeah, we've been praying for Phil, but what we want to do right now is sing happy birthday. Okay. <laughs> now, I just felt like he might need some lifting up this morning with what he's been through. He actually needed lifting up a minute ago. And, and so we want to uh, continue to remember Phil, but let's sing. Did anybody else have a birthday this week? Uh, Becky? Okay, Becky, Phil. I, I can't hear you. Cannon. Mine's Friday. Cannon. Cannon. Emma. Harry. Good gracious. My mom. That's a lot of folks to sing to. Y'all sing with me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. 
Happy birthday to you. All right. Thank you. You can be seated. Amen. Thank God for birthdays, right? We're going to go to the Lord in prayer right now and ask his blessing upon the rest of this service. I want you just to really sing this morning, all right? Can you do that? Can you lift it to God and lift those praises to him? They've been singing about that already. And so we're going to give you another opportunity to do that. Let's get our minds and hearts focused on him now. And and let's really give him the praise that he deserves, okay? Father God, we love you this morning, and we do thank you so much for all that you've done for us, especially for dying on that cross for our sins. God, we we say that, it just rolls off our lips. And God, I can't really imagine what all that must have been like. I know it had to be terrible. But God, I thank you for finishing the work, Lord, and for saving me. And I pray for anyone here this morning who does not know you, Lord, that they'll see you clearly this morning, and this will be their time to come and give their hearts to you. We just pray for the rest of this service, Lord, for the music as we sing. Help us to just sing from our hearts and praise and lift up your name. God bless the sermon, Lord. May we see the importance of giving thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. My soul is free. 
Thank you, God, for saving me. Let's do that bridge one more time in a minute. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God. You gave your life.
Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you got a
my Savior, you rescued me. Amen. Thank you all. Children may be dismissed for Children's Church. Thank you, Jesus, you rescued me. Y'all just say thank you, Jesus, one time with me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. On one episode of the Andy Griffith Show, how many of you ever watched that? All the old heads (laughs) have seen it. Well, Andy puts out a fire for Gomer uh, one day, and Gomer gets overly grateful, and he brings fresh fish for Andy's breakfast. He washes and repairs his car for free. He pledges and tells him he's going to fix the fence. He trims the hedges. He sweeps his garage, and he carries Opie to school, and I mean he literally comes to the house, picks him up, and carries him to school. Well, we might think that that's just a little bit overboard, maybe. Maybe. But when it comes to Jesus Christ, I don't think any of us have gone overboard when it comes to thanking him. In fact, I really don't think there's any way to go overboard when it comes to praising and thanking Jesus. I don't think our problem is not having enough gratitude. I think our problem is really not having enough gratitude often enough if we have a problem there. But there are several characteristics of gratitude that are important for us to really give proper thanks for God. And I want to give those to you. And then I want to share three other thoughts with you about uh, Thanksgiving this morning. Okay. Now, after 20 years preaching Thanksgiving sermons, it's not real easy to come up with something new about Thanksgiving. So I didn't. (laughs) I'm going to be telling you some things and reminding you of some things that you already know, okay? Uh, At least I hope you already know these things, but I think sometimes it's a good thing to remind ourselves, especially when it comes to praising God and recognizing the one who has given all for us, and I'm glad that's why we have a Thanksgiving time, but the first one is joy. When we give thanks to God, I really believe God is able to better put a joy in our hearts for him. Do you believe that? When we come to the Lord with an attitude of gratitude, uh, we can have joy in our hearts. Another part of our heart of gratitude, I think, is prayer. We talked about that last week, didn't we? Uh, Prayer is really important when it comes to thanking God. If Thanksgiving is not a part of our prayers, I think we're missing the boat. I think we're missing it just a little bit. Finally, being thankful in every situation, whether it's good or not, is is what we need to be doing, right? We sometimes, I think, fail to recognize the good and the negatives. But didn't God say that there's good in our negatives if we're a Christian? He didn't say it exactly that way, but that's what he said. It often leads to a heart of ingratitude if we don't think about that during the times of negatives. We get into this uh, woe is me syndrome, as I call it, and we don't have the proper heart of gratitude toward God when things aren't going so well in our lives. But the truth is, no matter what's going on in your life, you ought to be thankful to God. If for nothing else, remember, he said he'd never leave you or forsake you. And we've had a number in this church that are having some real Uh, what we might consider bad situations going on, but I want you to remember God is with you. 
Rely on that. Lean on that. Trust in that. Remember that God is for us. Isn't that what he said? And he said, if he is for us, who or what can be against us? I added the what part. Okay? So God is for us. Be thankful. Have a grateful heart because of that. And let me tell you this, having a grateful heart, it's good for us to have a grateful heart to God, but it's really for your benefit to have a grateful heart, like a lot of things that have to do with our relationship with God, right? It's better for you as a Christian if you're thankful, if you have a grateful heart to God and recognize the one who is doing what he's doing for us. Now, I want to give you three thoughts this morning that I hope will help us all in this having this attitude of gratitude, and the first one is this. First of all, God commands us to give thanks. He didn't just ask us, but he commands us to give thanks. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 says, give thanks in all circumstances. So we are to be a grateful people. 1 Chronicles 16, 8 says, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done. That may mean in our situation to make known among the people that we know about what God has done. First Chronicles 16.34 says, Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. So we are to give thanks. We are to be a grateful people. The main part, I believe, of your prayer life ought to be thanksgiving. And you ought to praise God and thank him for what he's done. Well, we could go on about that, but I hope you get the idea that this is for our benefit and it helps us. Harry Ironside, who is a Bible teacher at, and pastor of Moody Church in the 30s and 40s, said this. He said, we would worry less if we praise more. I believe that. We would worry less if we, we praise more. Then he said, Thanksgiving is the enemy of discontent and dissatisfaction, which is a disease that has plagued too many people today. And if you want to get rid of that, get your heart thinking about God and what he's done for you and praising him and thanking him for the things he's done. Aren't you glad this nation has set aside a day to do just that? Of course, we know we ought to be doing it every day, but at least one time during the year, I hope most people are thinking about giving thanks to God. Now, I'm not sure they understand that and know that, but most people do celebrate Thanksgiving. So at least the idea is there, and hopefully the, we get the message across that this is about God. And it's God that we're giving thanks for because that's who our founding fathers said it should be. The second thing is this. First thing is we are commanded to give thanks. The second thing is God expects us to give thanks. Come on now. God expects us as Christians, to be a grateful people. And Jesus demonstrated this clearly in the 17th chapter of Luke, beginning in verse 11, he said this, chapter 17 of Luke, beginning in verse 11, he said, Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee, and as he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. They were cleansed when they what? In obedience to God, they did what he said. One of them, come on now, just one of them, you could say it that way. When he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. Just like we were singing this morning, I hope you were singing in a loud voice. Some of you were, I heard you. <laughs> all right? But we all ought to sing in a loud voice when we're praising God. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. You can't overlook that. Jesus called him a foreigner, okay? Not one of the Jews came back, but one Samaritan came back. And Jesus asked, we're not all ten cleansed, where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? He was talking about his own people. You could say he was talking about Christians. We would fit in that because we are his people. Then he said to him, rise and go, 
your faith has made you well. Now, I believe before these 10 came and were uh, cleansed by Jesus that they had all been living together. They had been in concert with each other. They had probably cried out together. They had probably gone to different places together. And they came to Jesus together and they were all cleansed. Jesus rewarded their obedience by healing them, didn't he? Physically. But he wanted something more. Listen to me. He expected something more. This one came back praising Jesus. He did it in a loud voice. There was nothing quiet about it, and I believe he was praising him from his heart, a heart of gratitude. He was not a Jew. He was not one of God's people, but he was the only one who returned and praised God. That's a strong indictment, isn't it, on the ones who did not return. And in verse 19, Jesus said, rise and go, your faith has made you well. You see, Jesus wanted them all to be thankful. I think he was expecting all of them to return and give him thanks, but only one did. And he rewarded him with not, I believe, not only physical healing, but I believe he rewarded him with spiritual healing. Which one was the most important? The one got spiritual healing because he came back and praised God and thanked God. It's that important to God. And then the third thing I want to do, you know, some people uh, may not really understand what they need to give thanks for. They may not know what to give thanks for. They may not realize all the things that God has given to them and done for them. So I want to give you from Scripture some reasons that we can give thanks to God. There are things that God has done for us. There are things about who God is that we ought to be thankful about. And so I want to share some of these with you. The first one is in Psalm 75.1. 75.1, it says this. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your name is near. That's good stuff. God's just not off out there in the sky somewhere. Okay, if you're a Christian this morning, he's right here. There's no other religion that teaches that about their God. Jesus Christ chose to come and not just dwell among us on the earth for a short time before he was crucified, but he chose after that to come and dwell us, period, and be here all the time. He is, he is near, okay? He's not far off. If you're in a circumstance this morning that you're struggling with, Jesus Christ is here, he is with you right now, and he is in you right now. It doesn't get any better in, than that. So I love Psalm 100. Let me read it for you. It says, shout for, the, for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Shout for joy to the Lord. Worship the Lord with gladness, with happiness. Now, when you come to worship God, there might ought to be a little smile on your face at least. Know that the Lord is God. Too many people don't know that. They don't realize that. It is he who made us and we are his people. We are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. We belong to God. He made us. Shouldn't you be thankful for that? God gave you a chance at life. Nobody else did that for you. God gave you a chance to live. And he's given you an opportunity to live forever if you know him. Ooh, that's a no-brainer, isn't it? Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. In other words, come to him sometimes with praise and thanksgiving. Should probably do it all the time. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. I praise God all the time for his faithfulness because compared to my faithfulness, there really is no comparison. God is faithful in every situation all the time, every moment of every day. Don't forget that. 
It ought to encourage you to be faithful. Psalm 107.1 says something very similar. It says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. There is never a time, listen to me now, there is never a time that he will stop loving you. Praise God. We don't behave that way sometimes. But that's who God is. That's who God is. Psalm 118, 28. I've got several scripture here. I'm going to read. Is it okay if I just read some from the Bible? Psalm 118, 28. You are my God, and I will give thanks. You are my God, and, will, I, and will ex, I will exalt you. You are my God. He's personal, isn't he? This is a personal thing, okay? It's not some far-off God that's up there pulling the strings and doing things to us. It's personal. He loves us. He's in us, and he is my God. Now, if God hadn't chosen to be my God, he wouldn't be my God because I couldn't do that. But because God said, I will be your God and you will be my people, he included me in that when I came to know him. I can't give you any better news than that right now this morning about being thankful. If you can't think of anything else to be thankful about, you praise him for being your God if he is. 2 Corinthians 9.15 says, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift a gift that we really can't fully, completely understand and put into the proper words. What was that indescribable gift? His son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross, a very cruel death, to shed his blood, to give his body, to be tormented, to be tortured, and all of the things that he went through. How do you describe that? Somebody doing that for you. How do you describe that? Certainly it is love. It's got to be love. You wouldn't do that for somebody if you didn't love them, would you? Come on now. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four says, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, the bread, and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We ought to give thanks when we remember what Jesus Christ did for us. But before we can give thanks, maybe we ought to think about it sometimes. Maybe we ought to remember. <laughs> maybe we ought to ponder on it, meditate on it, and just let God just show us how important that was to us so that we will be thankful and so that we will be grateful. Too many people in this day and time just push that to the side. They don't want to think about it. They don't want to believe it. They don't want to accept it. I hope you're not one of those this morning because it's going to determine what happens to you in eternity, either heaven or hell. There, I said it. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, but thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You can't have victory in anybody else. You won't be victorious without Jesus Christ in your life. My goodness, why don't we start living like we're living in victory? Why don't we start acting like we're living in victory? Have just a little smile on your face like we talked about. 2 Corinthians 2.14, but thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal procession in Christ and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. Two things there. He always leads us in triumph. That goes back to that victory we just talked about, didn't it? He always leads us in triumph. You're not losing. You're not defeated. There should be no despair. There should be no anxiety. There should be none of that. And then he gives us the privilege of spreading him to others and giving them knowledge about him. How are you doing with that one? Are you spreading it? Are you so grateful to Christ for what he's done to, for you that you're telling folks about it. That you're sharing what Christ has done with you, with other people. That's good preaching. Come on now. 
Philippians 1.3 says, I thank my God every time I remember you. And Paul was talking about thanking God for other people. Ooh. <laughs> thanking God for other people. Are we grateful? We've got a good crowd here this morning. I don't know where y'all came from, but you can't y'all showed up here after we started singing, didn't they, Ken? And we looked out there at the very beginning and it wasn't half this full. But here you came, so you're here. Did you come because you love the people here, you love the Lord, and you wanted to fellowship with the people here because you love the Lord and you love them? Well, that's what God requires of you. That banner's not up there just to be a banner. It's got to say it means something. What it says means something. Loving God first and then loving other folks. Now, you know, we can usually do a little better with loving God than we love other folks sometimes. We ought to be good at both of them. We ought to come because we love others and we want to fellowship with them and we want to lift them up and help them spiritually. 1 Thessalonians 3.9 says this. I told you I got a bunch of them. I'm not through. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? There it is again. He didn't just say it once, and now he said it twice, hadn't he? Is this important? Is this important for us to get? Is this important for us to do? Absolutely. Hebrews 12, 28 says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, whoa, a kingdom, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and all. Our thankfulness ought to cause us to worship. There it is. But if you don't have a grateful heart, why are you going to worship? Why would you worship? If you're not thankful to God, why would you worship him? So we ought to be thankful to God. We ought to be thankful to God. Because we're going to receive a kingdom. I've told you this before, and you know this, and I told you I wasn't going to tell you anything new, but I was going to remind you of some stuff. The Bible says that Jesus has inherited everything. Since the cross, he's inherited everything because he was faithful and obedient to God. And if you're faithful and obedient to God and you love God and you live for God, you're going to inherit everything with him because the Bible says we are co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Co means we're right beside him, don't it? And we're going to receive the same stuff he receives, and it's going to be everything. So why are you worried about all this little measly stuff down here? Revelation 4, 9 through 11 says this, Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, there's a good reason to thank him, isn't it? The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. Because he lives forever and ever, so can you. That's what's important about that. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. There's that creation part again. But the part I really wanted you to get out of this verse was this. Jesus Christ is worthy of your praise and thanksgiving. Listen to me now. He is the only one who is. There is no other. So you don't have to worry about giving praise and thanks to anybody else. You don't have to concern yourself with that. All you have to do is praise him. That's all you got to think about. That's all you got to be concerned about. And then finally in Colossians 3.15, going back to we are commanded, it says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. So be peaceful people and be thankful. I know it goes without saying that every, every day should be a day of thanksgiving, right? Every moment should be a moment of thanksgiving. But on Thursday, people all over this nation are going to be celebrating Thanksgiving Day. And I sometimes wonder how many of them really understand what it's about and really know. I don't think there are many anymore. I think it's fewer and fewer that are really accepting the fact that Thanksgiving was set up 
to honor and give thanks to God Almighty. That's what it was for. There'll be special meals shared by families. Praise God, we got one today that we're going to share with you if you'll stay and eat with us. And we trace this back to 1621 to a small colony called Plymouth. Many of you know this story. 102 pilgrims set, across, set sail across the Atlantic for several reasons. One of those was for religious freedom so they could worship God without being persecuted. That was going on. How many of you have had to leave your home because of persecution? Probably none of us. Probably none of us. They arrived at Plymouth Rock in December of 1620, and by the time winter was over, there were 102 who came. Only 53 of them survived that first winter. That must have been a tough time. Some of them were family and I'm sure friends that they lost during that first year. It was a tough winter and food was scarce and some of them even starved to death. But by the fall of 1621, things began to look up and they sent out hunters to kill some wild turkeys for a feast and they invited the Indians to join them and they brought some corn and five deer which they had killed to add to the feast. And all of that was good and fine and dandy. But the thing that really amazes me about this story is this. They didn't blame God for all the hardship. They didn't look at all the negative stuff and say, God, where were you and why did you allow this to happen? They didn't do that. They came together to praise God for the good stuff. What were they doing? They were focusing on the good stuff that God had done for them. They were looking at all the good stuff and not the bad times that they had gone through. They also invited some folks to share in this time of Thanksgiving. Isn't that neat? These heathen Indians, as they would have called them. They invited them to share in this with them. Edward Winslow, who later became a governor of Plymouth Colony, wrote this about this time. He said this, and although it be not always so plentiful, they didn't have a lot, as it was at this time with us, yet by the goodness of God, we are so far from want that we often wish you partakers of our plenty. They said God gave them a bunch. Many of them starved, but they thought God gave them a bunch. That was their mindset. That's the way they were thinking. His words reminded me of the words of Paul in Philippians 4, 11 through 12 as we close this morning. Uh, Paul said this, Philippians 4, 11 and 12, he said, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Boy, contentment would heal a lot of our ills, wouldn't it? That's right. Amen. I know what it is to be in need. It wasn't that Paul had everything he needed all the time. He had needs. He was persecuted a lot. He was in prison. I mean, and we're talking about a prison now that was probably a 12-foot pit in the ground, cold, dark, and damp. He says, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Have you learned that this morning? Are you content with what God has given you and what you have and where you are in this life right now if God has brought you there? Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I am reminding you this morning of the circumstances surrounding that first Thanksgiving and what Paul has just said to help us in our situation where we do mostly, I think most people in here have what they need, don't you? You eat? My goodness, we're going to eat today. As good as you can eat. I believe Edward Winslow and those first colonists understood that and they acted on their beliefs to the point of sharing what they had with others. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to share what everyone has brought with all of us here today, okay? And we're going to be grateful. I didn't just ask you, did I? I said we're going to be grateful and we're going to be thankful this morning. God was the reason for their thankful heart. Is he the reason for your thankful heart this morning? All of that that we've read, all of the reasons that we get, just gave you, that's worth remembering. It's worth being told again, isn't it? 
It's worth being reminded again, and it's worth celebrating on Thanksgiving Day and every day. And I want you to stand with me if you would, and I want you to examine your own heart this morning. We need to be satisfied. We need to be content. Truth of the matter is, if we could ever get satisfied and content, we wouldn't have as many financial problems as we do, would we? We wouldn't have a lot of the other problems that we have. If we would just learn to be content and thankful to God for what he's given us. And if nothing else, do what Paul said and keep your eyes on the prize that's ahead of you. If you feel like your circumstances are bad here, just remember what's coming. Remember the hope that Jesus Christ has given all of us and be thankful and be grateful this morning. This altar is open. If, you need to, if you're struggling with that and you need to become more thankful this morning, if you need to give thanks right now this morning, come and do that. If you don't know Jesus Christ this morning, you don't have a whole lot to be thankful for. Probably nothing. And if you need to come into a relationship with Jesus, come down here this morning and meet him. I'm going to step down front here, and if you don't know the Lord, I'm going to ask you to come up here and tell me. And let's pray together, and let me lead you to the one who will give you a grateful heart and help you to be content, and who has a hope and a promise that, you know, that's the best news I can give you today. It's a hope and a promise that's a sure thing if you'll just give your heart and life to him. Would you come as they play?
should this life bring suffering lord i will I was driving home last night from my parents' house, and there was a radio drama that came on the Christian radio station, and it was some guy that um, a communist government had, someone in that communist government had killed both of his sons um, because they said they were Christians. So he went to the government and said, who was the guy who killed my sons? And they said, well, why do you want to know? He said, because I want to we want to adopt him. My wife and I want to adopt him and show him the love of Jesus Christ. Well, they end up arresting the guy. He's singing songs of praise in prison and the trying to share the gospel with the communist soldier. And the guy gets so t- tired of it, he shoots his lips off, is what it said, so that he could not sing anymore and shot him in the mouth. Well, and I think this is a true story from what it sounded like. So then... The guy's humming, and the, the soldier tells him to stop humming, and all the other prisoners in there say, no, we need, his, we need this. We need his, his songs and his testimony. Well, the guy shoots him, and the soldier shoots him and kills him. And uh, I was just so convicted about how much and how easy my life has been and how little actual suffering uh, that we have to deal with today. Um, and I just... this. The message today about contentment and just being content in any situation, letting go of the things of the world, it was so encouraging. So thank you, Pastor. And uh, let's pray and then go eat. Lord, we just thank you so much for this group that you have brought here today, God. I'm so humbled by the evidence of your Spirit's work in this place, Lord, and by the faithfulness of uh, the body of this church and the body of Christ in this church, Lord. Um, You are working in the lives of so many in this place, Lord, just help help it to become a fire, Lord, that this community and the people who come into this place would be drawn to you so strongly, Lord, that we would have a revival in this place, Lord, as I think you're already uh, doing a great work here, Lord. Just please, we, we believe that you will finish the work you have started, and we look forward to how you're going to complete this thing, Lord. Just thank you for the food, all the people who worked so hard to put that together and clean it up and uh, we're just so grateful for them also Lord and and we thank you most of all for your son uh, Jesus Christ without whom we would have no reason to be here and and no joy or hope uh, for the future in our lives so we're so thankful most of all for for your son and his sacrifice on the cross in Jesus name amen